for me, they're not investments, they're insurance policies. Because as you know, right now, both the Fed and tre Treasury went criminal. You know, they're buying anything. They're, they're even gonna buy junk bonds now. That means they're gonna print money like we've never printed in the history of the world. So if you're saving money and you're working for money, you're obsolete. Your brain is dead. You need to start thinking. And the average person has no idea what I just said. And it's insurance against the incompetence of the Fed and the Treasury. They're printing trillions of dollars. And if you're saving dollars, you might be in serious trouble because I just don't trust my government. I don't trust the Fed. I don't trust the Treasury, and I don't trust Wall Street. The financial world is no stranger to alarm bells and warnings, but few voices resonate as powerfully as Robert Kiyosaki's when it comes to predictions of economic crashes and bubble bursting. Known for his unfiltered takes and contrarian views, Kiyosaki has been vocally cautioning about impending recessions and economic downturns. A narrative steeped in a mix of historical context, financial principles, and a pervasive sense of fear, his perspective, far from being merely sensational, is rooted in a critical examination of current economic policies and market behaviors, presenting a grim outlook that urges individuals to rethink their financial strategies. Kiyosaki's narrative is built on the premise that the global economy is teetering on the edge of a monumental collapse, driven by unsustainable financial practices and systemic flaws. He points to a variety of economic sectors that he believes are in perilous bubbles, each poised to burst with devastating consequences. This viewpoint is not merely speculative. It draws from historical precedents and current economic indicators. The real estate market, the stock market, and the immense national debt are central to his warnings. Kiyosaki argues that these bubbles, inflated by excessive debt and rampant speculation, are unsustainable and will eventually lead to a severe economic correction. One of Kiyosaki's key points is the precarious state of the real estate market. He draws parallels to the 2008 financial crisis, where the collapse of a housing market triggered a global recession. Today, he sees similar signs, inflated property values, lax lending standards, and an over-reliance on debt. He argues that the artificially low interest rates set by the Federal Reserve have fueled a housing bubble that is bound to burst. When it does, it will not only decimate the wealth tied up in real estate but also trigger a casket of defaults and financial instability across the economy. The impact on Americans could be catastrophic, leading to widespread foreclosures, a drop in home values, and a significant reduction in consumer wealth. In addition to real estate, Kiyosaki is highly critical of the stock market, which he views as being propped up by artificial means rather than genuine economic growth. He describes the market as being driven by fear and greed, with valuations that far exceed the underlying economic fundamentals. The unprecedented levels of money printing and quantitative easing by the Federal Reserve have injected vast amounts of liquidity into the markets, creating an illusion of prosperity. However, Kiyosaki warns that this cannot continue indefinitely. The stock market bubble, once it bursts, will erase trillions of dollars in wealth, wreak havoc on retirement saving, and lead to a massive loss of confidence in the financial system. Kiyosaki also highlights the national debt as a ticking time bomb. The US government's reliance on borrowing to finance its operations has resulted in a national debt that exceeds $30 trillion. This level of debt, he argues, is unsustainable and will eventually lead to a fiscal crisis. The interest payments on this debt alone are becoming a significant burden, consuming resources that could be used for essential services and investments. As the government continues to borrow more to cover deficits, the risk of a debt spiral increases. When confidence in government's ability to manage its finances erodes, it could lead to a collapse in the value of the US dollar, hyperinflation, and a severe economic contraction. Amidst these dire predictions, Kiyosaki advocates for what he considers safe havens in form of gold and silver. He sees these precious metals not just as stores of wealth, but as critical assets for preserving wealth in times of economic turmoil. His stance is that gold and silver have intrinsic value and have historically served as reliable hedges against inflation and currency devaluation. Unlike fiat currencies, which can be printed at will by central banks, gold and silver are finite sources making them resistant to inflationary pressures. Gold, silver, 
and Bitcoin. I don't call them investments. I call them insurance plans right now. And it's insurance against the incompetence of the Fed and the Treasury. They're printing trillions of dollars. And if you're saving dollars, you might be in serious trouble. The value of the silver exceeded the value of the coin. So it, when that happens, you lose, the government loses money with every coin it produces, and they can't make that up on volume. So that's what's happened throughout history, that uh, the currency has been debased. They, they start printing more and more of the currency, and the value of gold and silver stays the same, and the value of the currency falls against it. what essentially happened. They added zinc and copper and nickel to the, uh, the coins and took the silver completely out. And what's interesting is if you look back in time and when the Roman Empire crashed, the value of the silver denarius, which was a Roman coin at the time, over about 50 years, it lost about 80% of its value. Right. Looking back to that date in 1964, the purchasing power of the dollar has lost about 80% of its value, actually 87% of its value according to the government itself. Kiyosaki's endorsement of gold and silver extends beyond their role as safe havens. He views them as million-making metals. He believes that as the inevitable economic crash unfolds, the value of these metals will skyrocket. The rationale is that in a world where paper money loses its value, tangible assets like gold and silver will become highly sought after. Investors will flock to these metals as means of preserving their wealth, driving up their prices. For those who have already invested in gold and silver, this could represent a substantial windfall. Kiyosaki argues that even a small allocation to these metals can provide significant returns, turning modest investments into substantial fortunes. Kiyosaki also touches on the broader implications of owning gold and silver. He views these investments as a form of financial independence and rebellion against the established financial system. By holding assets outside of the traditional banking and financial systems, individuals can protect themselves from the manipulations and failures of central banks and governments. This sentiment is particularly relevant in an era where trust in financial institutions is waning and the efficacy of monetary policies is increasingly being questioned. Brian London, a guest on Kiyosaki's show, reinforces these points by highlighting the historical resilience of gold and silver. He explains that these metals have been reliable stores of value for thousands of years, providing protection against the debasement of currencies. London emphasizes that as the governments print more money to address economic crises, the value of fiat currencies declines, making gold and silver even more valuable by comparison. This historical context underscores the enduring appeal of precious metals in safeguarding wealth. The discussion also delves into the technical aspects of investing in gold and silver. Kiyosaki and London advise against speculative investments in collectibles and rare coins, which require specialized knowledge and carry significant risks. Instead, they recommend focusing on widely recognized bullion coins, such as American gold eagles and junk silver coins, which are more liquid and easier to trade. This practical advice is aimed at helping investors navigate the complexities of the precious metal market and avoid common pitfalls. Kiyosaki's discussion with Anthony Pompliano introduces another dimension to the conversation, the role of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as alternative investments. Pompliano, a well-known advocate for Bitcoin, echoes many of Kiyosaki's sentiments about financial independence and the need for assets outside of traditional systems. Bitcoin is the most popular cryptocurrency. And, and the reason why that's important is um, it's all about confidence, right? Money is a belief system. And, and the more people that buy into the belief system, the stronger that the value of it is. And, and obviously, uh, there are now 2,000, 3,000 other cryptocurrencies. And I always kind of make a point to ensure people understand that Bitcoin, in my opinion, is the most important one. Uh, it's the most popular and, and has kind of all of the things that you want in um, sound money or sound currency. The other piece of this is um, a lot of people ask me, like, how do I think about Bitcoin um, in terms of my wealth, right, and, and my financial portfolio? And I think people are surprised when I say I look at converting U.S. dollars to Bitcoin as literally protecting my wealth. And I think a lot of people in gold and silver think the same way, yeah. right, is um, rather than hold this asset that literally is going to be devalued, I want to convert it to something that has uh, protection. 
based on the structure of the asset, right? And I think gold, silver, Bitcoin, etc. all have that. He argues that Bitcoin, with its decentralized nature and fixed supply, offers similar protections to gold and silver. Pompliano explains that Bitcoin's resilience against government interference and its programmability make it an attractive option for those looking to hedge against economic uncertainty. The inclusion of Bitcoin in the discussion highlights a modern twist on Kiyosaki's traditional emphasis on gold and silver. While precious metals have a long history as safe havens, Bitcoin represents a new frontier in financial independence. The decentralized and transparent nature of Bitcoin, combined with its potential for significant appreciation, makes it an appealing option for younger, tech-savvy investors. However, Kiyosaki and Pompliano also caution about the volatility of cryptocurrencies, which can pose significant risks. Kiyosaki's endorsement of gold, silver, and Bitcoin is ultimately rooted in a profound distrust of the current financial system. He views these assets as insurance policies against economic mismanagement and systemic failures. This perspective is not merely about preserving wealth, but also about challenging the status quo and taking control of one's financial destiny. The underlying message is clear. In a world of economic uncertainty and potential collapse, individuals need to be proactive in protecting their wealth and securing their financial future. Robert Kiyosaki's views provide an intense state of the global economy and the steps individuals can take to safeguard their wealth. His warnings about economic bubbles, the risks of excessive debt, and the potential for a severe downturn are grounded in a deep understanding of financial history and market dynamics. By advocating for investments in gold, silver, and Bitcoin, Kiyosaki offers a strategic approach to navigating these turbulent times. His emphasis on financial independence and self-reliance resonates strongly in an era where traditional financial systems are increasingly questioned.